is the weekly meeting of the Trusted Referral Network. Um, we're a network of about 175 uh, marketing services providers, all sort of small and independent uh, people from you know one person businesses uh, all the way up to agencies of let's say 20. I think if you go around the table here today, um, uh, Ari's company is a little bit bigger. There you go. Is that what he's pointing up for? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he works for a company that's like 40 people or something. Higher, 60. Keep on guessing. I, I think total employees were closer to like 80 to 100. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and we, you know, we get together on a weekly basis because uh, we feel that it's better to network among other marketers who can complement our services or to whom we can refer business uh, because we understand what they do being marketers ourselves. Uh, and uh, it's been working out. People have gotten lots of business. I haven't tracked it, um, but people keep on coming back. And I know that I've made a bunch of referrals and people have referred business to me, some of which is, has closed or has, is in the process of closing. Um, so we do, at each of these meetings, we try to do a 15-minute uh, showcase so somebody does a deep dive into um, what they're offering uh, or something that they know about that might be of interest to the rest of the group in the, in the realm of marketing. And today, Michael Filato is going to take that on, talk about roundtable marketing. Um, and, uh, and we have a sign-up sheet where people can, can do that uh, and sign up. We do have openings. So please consider doing it for, for the purpose of obviously getting, giving people a deeper dive into what you do so they really understand what makes you different. Um, and also honing your pitch, right? There's a great opportunity to hone your pitch in front of 10, 20 people. Uh, so Michael Filato of Filato Full, is it Full Throttle Filato Leads? It's a mouthful. It's a mouth Filato. Um, he's going to take it away. If everybody else would um, go on mute, and in the meantime, also, you could think about dropping your LinkedIn into the chat. Uh, at the end, everybody will have a chance to download that chat and have all that information. Um, so Michael, you should be able to, if you want to take it over. Cool. Go for it. So I basically do a uh, LinkedIn email and roundtable automation. And I've done a couple of times talking about what my automation approach is to basically send out 20 to 30,000 emails a month and a hundred invites a day, I was able to figure out another way of doing invites where it allows me to do hundred a day now. So um, you can only do hundred a week. So I'm able to kind of full throttle emails and full throttle LinkedIn. Um, what I've started adding um, is these round tables and the whole round table approach is to be seen as a connector. It's pre pretty much basically what we're doing right now. Um, but it's, it's using your first and connections and then using my automation to drive people to show up to, um, a round table to talk about a particular problem in the industry so that you can get people talking about what works and what doesn't. And, and they're, and they're basically sharing ideas between each other and you're kind of moderating it a little bit, but it's really more of a round table where everybody interacts. If there becomes more than like 10 to 15 people, like more, I had like 35 people and Michael and David Libby has been showing up. Then I do breakout rooms and, and the breakout rooms are let's do five at a time, do it for 10 minutes and you rotate. It's just a great way to kind of become a networker and a connector um, and fill up your own following. Um, so this is an example of one I did for myself. And I had about a hundred, 120 people um, registered. You get about a, 30 to 45 percent show up rate. Um, so this is part of my offering. I'm going to start charging probably, I don't know, two or three thousand dollars a month just to just to be a, a person that understands how to do roundtables right. Because you need LinkedIn and, and email automation around it to drive people to actually join um, the roundtable. The roundtable again, it's not about you talking about your product and doing a webinar. It's really more everybody's chatting and you try to moderate it a little bit and it's 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 very similar to what we're doing now but it's focused in on turning these people that are there into your customers um this is one that i just built with 
uh, my company that's in New York and Israel. It's called Napendo. And they basically have procurement software technology. And so he, I had him build a slide um, and he called it round, round table discussion around top challenges that face procurement leaders. And we just start advertising this and it was basically, we have 10, 10 right now. So if you have 10 to 15, it's again, one to many versus one to one demo. So it, it, it could save some of your time that you're doing. But again, it allows other people to talk with each other. It's pretty simple to set this up yourself. If you don't need my help, you just kind of go here to your LinkedIn and uh, click on events. These are all the events that you might have signed up for. There's tons of events in LinkedIn. But if you just click there, you can make an image. You can select the format. I always do external event, which would use your Zoom. Use a Zoom link. You got to have a private privacy policy on your website. So you're going to enter that here when you start doing that, because it's going to be a, a online. You want to maybe use a slide or have a graphic built for the for the round table. Um, have an event name, do it two to three weeks out, make you the speaker so that you can basically control the assets. The biggest thing here is not to have you as the organizer, have your company web page because you can basically download the external link. I'm sorry, the external, you can, you can download the CSV file of the people go into the round table and then you can send them uh, a message through email. And then also I would use your um, your Outlook and send them a real invite because you can, you'll get an invite and, and ask to put this in your calendar and I don't know how many people do it, but you got to remind people um, to uh, to basically go to this meeting. You also want to click on this, use a LinkedIn registration form so they can easily use their uh, LinkedIn profile to, to uh, sign up for this. Um, I'd probably leave it at there. Um, it's just kind of a little uh, secret that I've learned how to do. And I add it and I have added that to my uh, capabilities. And it's again, it's you got email more one-to-one -one, face to face that I do. And then they got LinkedIn, which is a little more, hey, let's connect. Can we do some business? And then this one's maybe even the third way, third way down is let's connect. Let's have everybody connect. Let's talk to each other. And it's a little less aggressive. So if you diversify your outreach, those three things, you could probably get some meetings from doing this. And um, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm done. I have a question. I know I know when you invite people, you sort of have to do it manually, sort of scroll down and click people. The pain in yeah. yeah. But is I, that, do you, do I, you do, that? I, I use linked helper, which is I showed you how to do it. Right. And, and then I basically would grab those people in, in sales. You got to have sales navigator right. and then base, and basically pick out the people you want to talk to. You know, you definitely your first connections would be the easiest. And then you start sending uh, emails or invites with your second connection. And if you're part of a group that someone else is in, you could you, you could see it, you could send like a message to them for free. But again, doing this yourself versus having someone like me do it, that's kind of the key is like, you can learn it, figure it out. It's a pain in the ass to figure out and what works and what doesn't. And then this is what I do. So, but I've added, three things now, email, LinkedIn, and roundtables, and it's, I'm not counting on just one solution to, to, to make it work. Very cool. And do, do clients typically um, use all two, uh, three, two or three of your services or usually just one? Well, the funny thing is I haven't started charging people <laughs> for, for the last one, for the roundtables. Roundtables, yeah. And then LinkedIn, I throw in one LinkedIn profile. And the because every time I add a LinkedIn profile, it takes up, as you know, Michael, a good part of your CPU. So you have to have, I could probably fit five or six on, on a laptop and then have to buy another laptop. So I have about four laptops going in my other office and it's doing bots all day. Um, so that, yeah, that's pretty good. Again, again, the round table is about expressing ideas, exchanging ideas. LinkedIn's about networking and emails about one-to-one. -one. Um, and so with those three things, you should be able to build your, your pipe, your top of funnel. Keith, you had mentioned that you also do roundtables, correct? Yeah, I've been doing them for several months. Uh, um, Mike, you and I uh, talked about that several times. I'd love to get involved with you on this. 
yeah. you guys could share share uh, share expertise. Yeah, this, um, it, he, we did. It's funny we did talk, but there, there was this one other guy that I forgot his name, who just had like a bass back ass word way of doing this, and he showed me how to do it. I'm like, why would I pay this guy three thousand dollars a month to do this manually? where I can automate. He, and, and then he, 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 uh, he was on the first call with me. I'm like, this is not how I want to run these round tables. So I ran with it. And then I, and then it's funny. Cause I remember then I go, shit, I talked to Keith about this and he does it. So it's a definitely a good, I mean, a good business, but I, for me, it's just mine. It's just another piece of my, my puzzle for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably going to start charging extra for it, but, uh, anyway, I figured out how to do it faster, better, cheaper than most people I know that do round tables. Hey, Michael. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. The other I Michael. Just, I just watched you sell the secret sauce, right? Yeah. On how to, how to set one up. And basically, once you get, you're, you're saying is once you get one of these two-week, three-week dates out in advance and then start trying to get people to invite them and then they register, right? Uh, and then you you just showed us one that has about ten people in it already, right? And, and it doesn't start till October. And you probably expect maybe how many more uh, registry? Well, I just I just did I, the last two I did is 111. So I'm already at 111 for the last one, and I'm already at 80 for the one on September 29th that I'm doing for myself. Again, I have a bigger total addressable market than a procurement company in the. Oh, that was for the procurement. Yeah. So, so, so you're you're helping them as a client, right? So, yeah, they, they're they're using me for email and LinkedIn, and then I'm I I said I, I'm like everybody's like, hey, how much are you charging for this? I'm like, well, I'm not really charging. Yeah, I'm gonna add that. I, I'd rather show someone how to do this and let them run with it because it does take some time. But what I would do for them once they figure it out is I would dry, use my automation to drive attendance, like. I showed you guys how to do it real quick because I, it's something that LinkedIn offers for free. But if you really want to do it right, you would basically have someone that understands how to do it and understands how to drive people to the to the um, to the automation. Now you either be me or or hiring Keith because he does it. He does what he does mainly, but uh, ma mainly I mean. Um, so I mean I, I don't I don't know what the difference. I forgot what what Keith does compared to what I can do here but he you know he has a whole like uh curriculum towards it as well so my whole thing is just another piece of what i do and it works and i love it so, so and it so makes both, it makes me more it makes me more sticky as you need me because you don't understand how to do it and you're going to hire me because you i could do three things versus one so you're getting your hooks into your client and offering this extra service so it's more of they need you yeah. i get it uh, either this question may be just going to Michael or or Keith, since both of you promote roundtables in this manner and you do it for your own business. Because, like you said, Michael, uh, you you get in with a group of people in a in an hour or forty minute discussion or whatever it is on Zoom in that external link, and uh, you are basically talking about ways how everyone having a discussion like we're having now but then you're also the only advantage is you're hosting it and you get to sell your services yeah i mean i don't try to like i don't like when i do my pitch it's more about don't do this on email don't do this on linkedin it's not hey this is what full throttle does and you got it you got it you can't be like too self-serving i also created a central florida MRN type group as well. And I'm doing it. I'm doing, I'm driving automation to that. So I have a central Florida a group. Um, but yeah, the whole idea is like you can make one of these, but as Michael was saying, it's very manual to like invite people and you're all your first connections and it's it's a pain in the ass. So if you don't use automation and also a, like an email platform like I do, it's 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 almost not, it's almost a complete time suck to do it. So that's why I showed you how to do it, because even if you do try to do it, you're going to want to pull your hair out. Keith, is that true? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we use. Um, uh, is it true? What do you call me, a liar? Paul? <laughs> no. <laughs> this okay. is it. You know, I'm a black belt jiu-jitsu pal. You're going to. That's not good. <laughs> you got to have marketing automation to do it, whether you're using Apollo 
I think I use an Apollo and linked helper, yeah, to automate. Yeah. Yeah. We're using uh, Sam AI. I'm also doing one right now uh, with a client that's on HubSpot. You know, the key is you've got to be able to clean the list. Um, the place you buy lists from, they put, they seed with uh, fake names. They, you know, there's, you also have to do it in a way that isn't going to get you listed as a spam. That's one reason to do it through Apollo. Um, and then when somebody opts out, or um, uh, says they're going to come or says they're not going to come, you've got to be able to get them off that list if you're going to do a second mailing. So it is a real, uh, it's not complicated. It's just complex when you're dealing with, you know, the kind of volume of leads that, that uh, both Michael and I are, are doing this. I mean, it, the, the numbers that we're seeing are about 5,000 people invited, 100 to 120 people will indicate interest. Uh, 20 to 30 will show up and uh, you'll get four or five sales calls. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, calls. I'm getting uh, 100 people to say they're coming and about 35 showing up. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're doing 5,000 and getting? Uh -huh. We're getting, um, it depends on the list and the offer, but between 100 and 200 people indicate uh, a yes or a maybe. Um, and then- Okay, okay. You're, you're, you're inviting, for, okay, I see. Yes, yeah. I probably invite a couple thousand and get about a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is I'm doing one on the 29th. Do you guys want to see how it's done? Or like this is us. This is like top of funnel, hot and trade I trade uh, ideas and trips and tips and tricks. Somewhat like this, but it's more about top of funnel. Right. And there's a topic, compete. right? It's it a topic compete. of discussion. Top of discussion. It's, it doesn't right. compete with Michael. It's just there's tons of ways to do these these top uh, roundtables, and you should really, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think my my view is, you know, uh, you share what you want to share, recognizing that some people are going to pick up on your ideas, um, maybe you know, do something similar, um, and uh, you know, but it's it's all in the uh, toward the goal of raising the level of knowledge and helping everybody out. Um, across the board and and there's clearly you know competition uh, between members but um um you know the idea is the knowledge that everybody gains rises all boats um so it's up to folks in the in the group to decide what they want to share and what they don't want to share yeah. um so there's no uh, screening like you don't screen the people who are well um, when, when you send what? out the messaging you don't want to I'm not going to send other LinkedIn automation firms or, or other or, uh, SDR Legion firms. I don't want them sitting there calling. I had a couple of people go like, well, what about this? Well, like, this guy's trying to try to, to sabotage me. So you, the first one I did, I kind of just, I didn't have, a, I was, I didn't know how to do as good. I, I'm getting better every time I do it. And I know, I know how to do it pretty good now. So yeah, um, how you how you moderate time. is is critical. Um, I think we're gonna finish it up. It's fifteen minutes. Thank you so much, Michael. Very informative. Um, uh, does anybody have to leave early? Um, because I can have them. Okay, Ari, I'll move you up uh, to the beginning. Um, I just I just wanted to pitch and go see a guy. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm gonna stay on. I just I'll I'll be uh, walking. To pick You'll up my walking. daughter, so I'll. I don't, okay. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me later. Okay, um, I'm just moving some names around here because I'm going to put the order more or less in which people showed up, but I'm going to put Ari up front. Um, Sharon, I think you'll get the uh, the way this all works. Uh, it's not all that complicated, um, and so we usually have. Uh, let's do it two minutes uh, per person. Um, I'm going to put my timer on. Uh, tell us what you do, um, what makes you unique, how you can help other people in the group or people, um, uh, you know, your, your clients. And if you've got a particular ask, you know, you're looking for connections to X, Y, Z, uh, this type of person, that type of person, uh, that's great too. And I'm going to put uh, everyone in the meeting. Um, so start with Ari, then Stacy, then Steve Sadler. Uh, David Libby, 
There it Bryce is. Bryce said he needs to leave early so he can go before me. Oh, Bryce needs to leave early. I'm sorry, Bryce. Um, so I'll I'll uh, drop you in there as well. Uh, maybe. Um, where do I have you, Stacey? Okay, why don't you go after after Ari? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so Ari, um, if everybody would go on mute, uh, because I'm going to put it in speaker mode so that on the recording, the speaker takes the full screen. Um, and if uh, you don't have it on mute and you, you say something, it's going to take away the screen from him. Or so take it away, Ari. I'll put you on timer. You'll hear it when it goes off. Sure, happy to. Um, first thing, I would recommend everybody to get a coffee date with Michael. It is a singular pleasure. He's a wonderful coffee mate. So there's a plug there. Uh, second from that, um, I, I'm head of growth for a uh, web design and SEO agency. Um, the, the Just simply put, keeping it simple, the, the best thing we can offer is um, low expense building a website for a client that they feel like they have some sense of ownership over, not just owning the website, but being able to edit it, make changes, but also have us maintain it, make edits for them in the background and keep it pretty uh, pretty cheap. The lowest we go for a website is a thousand bucks. Um, for most of our clients, it's about five to 6,000 a year for having a website, maintenance, SEO and such. Um, and one thing I would recommend if anybody wants to connect with me directly is I've learned it's pretty simple to create a website um, depending on what platform you use. And I'm happy to walk people through what the experience is like and to do like basic SEO, I think even at a higher marketing level, most people don't really understand how to do some of the simple stuff. And um, it can it can really save them a lot of money just to understand what they're paying for um, or referring to. So definitely connect with me. My LinkedIn is in the chat um, and be happy to speak with anybody. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, there's a little bit of, um... I don't say interference, but um, break up in your in the audio. I don't know if anybody else heard that. No, okay, just me. Um, okay, uh, Bryce, do you want to go now? Yeah. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, sure. And there was a little a little bit of uh, disruption in your in your audio there, Ari. Um, so yeah, mine uh, mine's really simple today. Um, so we have a consulting aspect of our business to grow, help grow businesses in a couple different ways. We look at about five different areas, which is leads, which is a lot of what Michael does, uh, Michael Flato rather, um, conversions, uh, transactions, how many people, how many times people buy from you better prices for getting more value for what you do for other people and profit margins. So if anybody's interested in uh, kind of checking out what we do, I've had a bunch of people come through, been really happy with uh, some of the results and uh, some of the information that they get. <clears throat> we do a, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, we do a free webinar every Monday or sorry, Tuesday morning at uh, 830 AM PST. Um, so it's 1130 for you all on the East coast. Um, totally free, just a bunch of learning and stuff. Um, and uh, we do offer a referral um, uh, JV for anybody that wants to send us anything. And uh, yeah, that's the main thing today. So I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Um, and I just got, I was hoping Craig was going to be here. So I just got off a call um, talking about a JV with a referral that he sent me. So I wanted to thank him for that. Um, so if anybody sees him, thank him for me if I don't see him next week. Um, and yeah. Which, uh, Craig, offers... which Craig is that? Craig... P can't remember can't remember his last name I'll, I'll find it but yeah but uh yeah so um i'll be paying him a referral fee if anything happens with his referral and uh, happy to do the same thing with everybody else and bryce is out in vancouver and his company is called mind of a marketer yep. um it's on the uh on the website uh and obviously he will put his linkedin uh in there as well and uh, your weekly events, Bryce, are top notch. I really enjoyed it and uh, look forward to doing it again. And I, I'm even thinking of hiring the the evil marketing genius. <laughs> yeah, um, and we're doing something on uh, follow-up strategies right now. So for the next uh, two weeks, um, I think, or actually next week might be the last one. But yeah, follow-up strategies right now. Um, and yeah, it's uh, re really good and some free information. So have it, hope everybody has a great day. Talk to you soon. When is it? Thank you so much. Um, next um, Tuesday, uh, 8.30 a.m. or 11.30 Eastern. Oh, it's Tuesdays at, uh, at 11.30 Eastern? Uh, yeah. Okay. And where do we find that invite? 
Um, I just put uh, a link in the chat there. So that'll take okay. you to the meetup and then you can just sign up there and it'll give you the invite. Okay, it's a meetup. Wonderful. Okay, yep. Stacy, you are up. Thanks so much. Hi. Bye. <laughs> so last Wednesday, uh, I received an email from a client and I'd like to read it. Um, it's very short. So it says, hi, Stacy, exclamation point. I can't tell you how, can you hear me? Yep. I can't tell you how much we appreciate the effort you and your team put into these articles, including links, conducting research, turning them back on, and turning them back on time, et cetera. They're always capital A-L-W-A-Y-S. Uh, they're always quality. That said, please don't worry about going over the word count. They're worth the additional spend. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but our blog traffic has significantly picked up after we focused on rewrites and SEO keywords, all to say, Let's keep the current stra strategy current. Uh, keep the keep with current strategy despite any upticks in cost. So that's what my team does. Um, we we write high quality, um, high value content because it works. We do it. We don't. You know, when people come to us, it's not. We don't write their website to you know fill up the the page with with words. We write it to make their phones ring. That's the whole point. Um, and that's every single time. That's our, you know, that this is what we do. Um, we, it's, we're a small team of um, lawyers and paralegals, law students, and we write copies specifically and solely for the legal industry. And that can be anyone from a law firm to um, a legal magazine, to a legal software uh, company, um, bar associations, digital marketing. Some of our clients are digital marketing companies and they use us as their writing arm for their legal industry clients. Uh, and we do everything from websites to social media posts to magazine articles, video scripts, you name it, we do it. Stacy Mathis of Legal Copywriting Central. Thank you. And I see good timing and I see you've got a new background. I do. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, I, I, for some reason I had... Fiverr, yeah. Um, uh, I found that a lot of them uh, have the logo right in the middle, as yours is, and and you you cover it, right? <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> or you disappear. Um, I have to fix that. Yeah, but it looks yeah. more authentic. I, it looks more authentic. I actually yeah. uh, changed all my backgrounds to left or right, and then I put yeah. my camera. If you move your camera, if you have a a, a uh, not a camera on your on your laptop. If you just do this, you'll you don't you don't want to cover up your logo with your head. Yeah, if you can avoid so, it. Thank you. Some, something that. to uh, something to consider. I was, them, I was a videographer for in, in the Air Force, so I, <laughs> I politely disagree. But go ahead. Whatever, <laughs> Libby. You shut your mouth. Uh, right? Let's move on, guys. State that was uh, Stacy. Thank you so much, Stacy. Steve Sadler, you are up. I am up. I got to follow that. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, nice background. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, my name's Steve. I'm with a company called Folion. And what Folion is, is a content creation platform. And, um, uh, you know, we make it easy for anyone to create engaging, uh, interactive content and still stay 100% on brand. Uh, I always try to say that we're trying to uh, blow up the normal PDF. A couple of the use cases um, that we see, um, there's many, but, you know, newsletters, brochures, Sales proposals, white papers, ebooks, whatever you're creating, um, and some of the verticals that we're uh, really doing well with right now are um, higher ed, uh, tech, marketing, legal, uh, uh, agencies, finance, mo a lot, most anything really. Um, and I will just say um, the three of the pain points that we hit on: um, scalability. This is what our customers are telling us they have a problem with, so we can help with this scalability just not enough time to create all the content they want to create. Um, engaging, you know, you want to stand out, but you're still using the flat content like a PDF and intelligent, um, meaning that you send a PDF out, you don't know who's reading page one, two, three, or four, you hope they open it, um, and, uh, but no analytics. So Folion can help in all that. And um, on top of that, you don't have to be a digital designer to create some awesome stuff. It certainly helps, but even I can create something that looks pretty cool. I don't know if that's two minutes, but it's got to be close. Uh, you got 48 seconds. and Oh, uh, okay. And don't, well, I, I mean, will add one thing then, just that 
because Folion is such a visual um, oriented um, platform, uh, I always think the best way is to see examples or see it, see it working like a demo uh, type situation. So by all means, if anybody has any interest, I can, I can uh, make that happen. You can do a showcase. Can you keep it to 15 minutes? You sound very doubtful that I can keep something under 15 minutes. Well, you've done pretty well so far under two minutes. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I can do it. I can do it. So sign up. Absolutely. Sign up for <laughs> sign up for an upcoming showcase. Okay. Love to have it. Love to see I it. I can do that. Um, and Folion and Steve is one of our uh, sponsors. So he doesn't provide a marketing service, but a marketing product. And um, we're happy to have him. Um, that was Steve Sadler. David Libby. Michael Bendit. Oh, yes, yeah, take it away. I like to joke around way too much. So sorry about that earlier. You know, Falado and I have a thing going. I think we must both wear black most of the time. Um, so hey, um, I'm David Libby, and I've been talking about something different than what I will talk about today. And that is most folks who are in the executive level positions do not have time to write their own content. And so what I've been doing is offering to write content for them. I'm writing their articles, I'm writing their blog posts. And unlike Fiverr and Upwork, you know, we lean in with strategy and we're focused on helping build these content pillars and creating a content strategy that leads to growth, that leads to lead generation. So kind of kind of folding into what Falada was talking about. And we're in the middle of the funnel, actually. So if you know any agencies, any PR agencies, any marketing agencies, any ad agencies, any companies that have executives that need someone to write for them, blog posts and articles, let me know. If we close the business, I will give you 10% of the gross revenue for a year. So it's a it's a, like the gift that keeps on giving. So thanks so much. Wow. And is that in your profile at 10%? Uh, yes. Okay, good. And so is this a, a, a switch or this is an added service to your PR services? It's It's a... It's an added service, but it's its own service okay. because the the you know the PR folks are just you know it's not like it used to be. It's broader, and mm -hmm. I've noticed that really to fuel the PR to fuel the social, what do you have to have? You have to have content, and you have to have good content. Content that's not just SEO, but content that's thoughtful, provoking, differentiates you, differentiates your company. It's not an easy task to come up with that kind of content, but I've been a communications pro for close to 30 years so you know i know what makes people tick cool thank you so much graham riley yeah. talking about content hey guys uh thank you so much uh michael it's been a pleasure listening to what everybody's uh, up to and uh, what they offer uh piggybacking off what david uh says uh, we are maverick north america uh we also have a Ma maverick uk so there's about 60 people in our organization uh we've lent into the linkedin platform rather like michael has and when it comes to uh, establishing thought leadership uh, driving business development uh, we help uh, companies with uh, three things we help them with um, establishing awareness, building trust, um, trust in the fact that the individual is a subject matter expert in the customer's pain point, and then building a belief that of the other options that are out there, that um, our clients are the premier provider in their space. And so not only do we do uh, the content and we're posting five days a week on behalf of the client, but we're also uh, building out the LinkedIn profile that establishes the uh, client as the subject matter expert. So we set the stage. Secondly, we put bums on seats. And so we're growing our uh, client's network full of influencers and decision makers. And then we are building, um, then we're sharing content to build that trust with that audience. And then we use uh, messaging blended in with training with the client uh, so that there's a nice smooth handover between marketing uh, ending and the sales process beginning. Uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, Graham is out somewhere in the West, Midwest? Mon uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis, yes. Yep. Northwest. All right. Uh, started getting cold up there yet? 
It is cooling down. It is cooling down. All right, Mark Harry, you're up. That is right. I am Mark Harry. I'm here from Salt Lake City. Just pleased to be here to share with you what I do as a search engine optimization white label marketing specialist. So as a white label specialist, whenever I have a chance to meet with someone, I always ask this question. Have you ever met with a performance-based marketing specialist who does white label? And they always say, well, I spoke to a white label person before, or they might say, tell me more about this performance-based. Uh, I think everybody's into performance-based services. And so when I say performance-based, I tell them about what the service I do. I do 30-day trials on every website that deserves to be number one. I charge a very minimal fee uh, once I get the rankings number one on the first page of Google. And then the client is the digital marketer SEO company. They, they benefit, right? They benefit for having their most difficult website now number one on the first page of Google. And they didn't have to take the risk with their vendor. And the vendor did all the risk taking and get some number one ranking. So they look good and they're happy and they grow and they make more business and they want to do more business with myself at SEO game. So as a performance-based SEO, I always ask, have you ever spoken to performance-based SEO? And they say, no. And I always like to say, well, if you do business with me or you just meet with me on LinkedIn and you don't even, you know, because I do like to just meet with every person on LinkedIn, I'll surround you with five or six other performance-based marketers that may do just performance-based social media, performance-based ad, ad spends and buys, performance-based lead generation, performance-based web design. <laughs> I can list on and on and on all the connections that I have that I could send you referrals and I could kind of work like a concierge for you, a hotel concierge. When you go to the hotel, Michael, when you go to Europe next week, mm -hmm. you're going to probably run into that concierge, right? And you pay, you slip him $20 if he does something or 20 euros or whatever the charge is. But literally the concierge bends over backwards to try and make things happen for me, right? Supposedly. I got to cut you off because it's two minutes. Um, okay. Anyway, that's you, what you I want to do. You would I love if you could do a, a showcase and show how you've, how you've, you know, done the results, if you can share some of the results of your, your work uh, for some of your clients to show, you know, keywords and, and where they show up on, on Google. I love that. Thank you. All right. So you know where the sign up is. Um, uh, let's see. That was Mark. Who's next? Uh, Sharon Mostyn. You're up as our one and only guest today. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Sharon Mostyn. Uh, as Michael mentioned, I'm a guest. So, uh, you know, take it easy on me. <laughs> um, my company, Monster Marketing Group, is a full-service marketing and advertising agency, and we are a little bit different in that we not only do white label like many of you do, um, but everything that we do leads back to some sort of measurement. My background is 20 years in direct response television agency, and the idea behind DRTV is that there's always a form of measurement. Um, there's, you know, always a call to action, do it today, call now, visit our website, come into our stores. Um, the measurement is how many people actually did all of those things or any of those things. And then there's always optimization that transitioned really easily into, uh, into digital. And we, I'm individually certified in both Google analytics and Google ads. Uh, we're a Google partner, which basically means that we spend enough money and we've passed all the exams and occasionally they'll send us a Google coffee cup. So, so, uh, so that's, you know, like I said, we work uh, both with partners as a, a white label agency, as well as directly uh, with clients. Uh, when I first started the business, I was given a piece of advice that, you know, I really should focus on specific, you know, I only do B2B or B2C or you know, in nonprofits or whatever. Um, we, my, you know, our, our philosophy is we'll, we'll work for anybody with the, uh, with the right budgets. Um, we're not the cheapest, but we, uh, we've been doing this for quite a few years and we bring the results and, and we measure it to show that we actually are bringing the results. So. And be cheap and then buy a boat like that. 
So, uh, <laughs> and you're based where? Clearly near the water. Um, so I'm, I'm actually based in Cape Coral, Florida. Right. And we, uh, we spend a fair amount of time. Uh, we have two adult children and their spouses and our new grandbaby in Baltimore. So we spend a fair amount of time in the Baltimore area as well. Clearly Sharon got married when she was 10 because she doesn't look like she'd be a grandmother. All right. Let's Funny, move on. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Faith Tomasis, Tomasis, I always get it wrong. You'll have to correct me. Faith, are you there? Gotta have Faith. Where is she? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. You, me you are now? in. Yep. Hi, I'm Faith Tomasis. I'm currently in New York City. And uh, I am also a content creator, also known as a marketing communications consultant, also known as a writer, also known as a messenger. So um, call me whatever you want, but call me. Um, old joke. Anyway, I, uh, my, my uh, point of difference really is getting to the point very quickly, uh, succinct, tight uh, communications. And that lends itself very well to website writing, as you know, because the client's going to, the reader's going to leave if you don't get their attention. And I also have a very large portfolio in name development, which is its own specialty. And I'm happy to talk to anybody about the uh, intricacies of that. But the bottom line is, if it's good, it's taken. So um, my most recent uh, victory, a uh, project I worked on last year has just come to market and it's a new product out called Defendies from the makers of Coldies. And it's an immunity supplement. And I did the front panel package copy. And, and the big aha I had to tell the client was to make really big one dose a day. Because when you get into packaging, these little itty bitty details become very important and they, they get looked over by the lawyers uh, 7,000 times. So to get one finally on the shelf in the marketplace is very exciting. So um, that's what I do. I do websites, I do package design, I do brochures, I do name development and uh, get in touch. Thank you. Yeah, I always have a problem with reading the dosage levels, right? It's like Get on my glass, then put on another pair of glasses, and then get the micro the uh, the uh, microscope or the magnifying glass. All right. Um, thank you so much, Faith. Keith Reynolds. Yeah. Hi, I'm Keith Reynolds. Um, I have a company called Publio, and we are a content strategy consulting and training firm. Uh, we I, I started Publio after. Uh, several years of being involved in the HubSpot world. Um, even before that, I started a blog that uh, led me to testify to Congress for a topic that, uh, a homeland security topic. And that led us to a meeting in Washington, D.C., and then out to Sandia National Laboratory where they acquired our equipment. And I started noodling on that around 2010. And by 2014, I had done a project for Kodak to build chief packaging officer. And when they sold the division that we worked for at Kodak, the acquiring company wanted to buy chief packaging officer as a media property. And uh, it got me thinking that val the value of content really lies not just in the lead generation pipeline value, but also there's enterprise value because it it's part of what you acquire with a company. So they, they ended up getting an 8x increase in the initial offer for the company in part because of that, that transaction. And that led me to write a book called The New Content Culture, uh, which is up on my website. And uh, I now have a second book that, uh, this one's up on Amazon. I have a second one you can download from our website. Uh, it's all about inbound marketing. Content is really an, an engine for inbound marketing. And to do that, you need to have what I call a content hub. So our blog is called The Hub. It is the North Star idea for the kind of marketing that we do. And we encourage and help train and, and develop companies to run their marketing department like a media company. Just like a media company gets data back from Nielsen to say how they're doing, you can set up your marketing automation to, to uh, 
give you the feedback that you need to continually produce better content. So I helped set up the ecosystem to do that. Um, on our blog called The Hub, um, we do an interview uh, for our podcast. Uh, the podcast is uh, a video on our blog. It's also out on Spotify and other uh, platforms. Um, and just to, you know, I, I really believe in webinars and roundtables. I've been doing events since the beginning of my career when I started doing computer fairs for IBM. And learning and networking are the two most important things that your audience is going to want to do. And a roundtable is a good part of that. Uh, it has to be supported by content. I've also partnered uh, with now a company that has me producing a roundtable series for them. We called it Encaptify. You know, uh, Shannon, uh, Michael, and just, yeah. um, we're doing one this Thursday. If you like the roundtable format, I invite you to join us. You can sign up uh, on the LinkedIn or I also put the, the registration tab. The, the last thing I'll just show is that by working with Encaptify, we've turned it in, into all of the functions you'd have at the Jacob Javits Center, or the Denver, Denver Convention Center, where you enter the lobby and from the lobby, um, there'd, there'd be a leaderboard, there's a full agenda. And within the round table, you want people to do different things. So you may have a presentation for a little while, and then you wanna switch people over into a networking format, or you want- Keith, I'm gonna have to cut you off. Is there, um, I think some of this stuff could be really good as a as a as a showcase, whether it be the roundtables or um, you know a different angle from from what Michael had discussed. Um, you know, we we definitely appreciate different different approaches or what you're doing for uh, in captive. Yeah, really and impressive. and I'll just finish with the key is is to concentrate it all around the blog on your site so that there's one location that's drawing all of the SEO credibility. So it really ties everything together. I'll leave it at that, but thanks for the opportunity and look forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sign up definitely for a showcase. Um, let's see. And last, let's see, we have um, Ron Hupcher next, and then I'll do it myself unless I missed anybody. Ron, you're up. Hi, great to see everyone, Michael. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so my question to everyone is, have you ever been working with a client and they keep pushing you hard for discounts, right? And you don't know what to do. Like you don't want to lose the client. You want to win the deal, but they're starting to push you and push you and you don't know how to respond. Uh, we help solve that problem. Uh, I run a company called the Sales Optimization Group. We specialize in sale, business to business sales negotiation training. Uh, we work with companies, a lot of SaaS companies like um, Google, uh, Oracle, um, uh, DocuSign, just as an example. So what we do is help companies and salespeople negotiate and close deals without discounting. We increase close rates and we accelerate the sales cycle. So that's what we do. And by the way, um, anybody wants a free copy of my book, Closing Time, we have a PDF version available on the website. I'll, I'll put it down here. It's about 85 pages. I keep everything short and simple because that's what I'm about. Uh, and it'll take you less than an hour to read. You should have an idea or two that can really help you out. And uh, you're up in New York or in Florida now? I'm in Florida full-time these days. Full-time in Florida. Where in and, Florida again? Uh, uh, Boynton Beach. Boynton Beach. Okay. And, and, and Graham, it is getting cooler here. It was 84 degrees. So um, you had mentioned it's getting cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Cooler, 84 degrees, wonderful. Did I, thank you, Ron, did I miss anybody before I take the- Hey, hey Michael, can I give a short, uh, sure. shout out to Mark Harry? Uh, Har sure. uh, uh, he did a great job, I spoke with him last week and he was really super helpful. So I'd recommend everyone give Mark a call. Wonderful, thank you so much. Always good to give other people a shout out. We're gonna have a few minutes at the end after I do my own two minutes. Um, so you all know me, Michael Bendit uh, is my name. Um, I, uh, my, my business, Software Development Resources, we are a, um, a sales rep firm for about a dozen software development, boutique software development agencies. Uh, and we do about 60% of our work in the marketing world. Uh, and a lot of that is, is basic websites, it's mobile applications, e-commerce sites. And then we offer a couple of other things uh, I recently um, uh, added to my capability. It's sort of strange, but um, Roblox games are something that's being um, uh, explored by by brands so that they can get their products um, into the Roblox environment. Um, you think it's just for kids, but apparently there are lots of adults that are playing in the Roblox environment. 
Um, so always looking for, for new and interesting uh, teams to potentially represent. Uh, but definitely the bread and butter is uh, websites and e-commerce sites and some mobile development. My best leads are um, digital marketing agencies. And people might think, well, isn't that what you do? I mean, aren't, aren't you in competition with digital agencies? And I tell them that we, we basically are the backup. We're the guys that build the engine when the agency is building the car. Um, they're doing the design. They're doing the strategy. Uh, but they don't want to necessarily, or they may not have the skills in-house to do the programming. Um, so we definitely bring that technical angle, the technical skills um, to building those assets, uh, those digital assets. Um, and we don't step on the toes of our, our partners. They decide how far into uh, the development they want to go. Usually it's you know doing the wireframes, the design, certainly the strategy, and we're doing the implementation and most often the maintenance as well. Um, so would love to connect with anybody who um, either has a client who needs a revamp of a website, uh, a new website, a new e-commerce site, a mobile application, um, or even a startup that is looking to build something new. Uh, so that's my little pitch. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the gallery mode. So we have like a couple more minutes left. Anybody have any comments, questions? Don't forget that we do have a, um, a sign-up sheet for the, um, for the showcase. Uh, I'm going to put it in the, it's always in my, um, uh, in my newsletter, uh, but I will add it now. Give me a sec, events. Uh, it's sign-up zone. I'm going to put it in the chat. That's it. So that's where you sign up. Um, for the showcase. In fact, I'll share my screen as well. Uh, this is where it is. So we had um, Graham spoke uh, on the 6th. Uh, nobody did, uh, did we have somebody on the 14th? Yeah, we did have somebody on the 14th. I think it was um, Lynn, uh, Lynn Donaldson. Um, today, the 20th, uh, Michael Filato, but you can see we have openings going forward. Uh, it's always great if people uh, have a little more time to pair so they uh, they dedicate or they commit to doing one of these. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Anybody have any questions, comments? Go ahead, um, Stacy. Faith, do you ever write for the legal industry? Me? No, Faith. Faith. Um. Uh, you're on mute. Faith. Dude. I worked for I, I worked on a name for a little firm. Oh, I've, okay. done, I've done a lot of editing and proofreading. Got it. In the, in the legal industry. Uh, have I done anything for the legal industry specifically? I can't think of it right now. Okay. But I've been meaning to get in touch with you for a long time. So let's set up. I should definitely, definitely connect. Um, now's a great time to click on the more chat and then um those three dots on the right Michael, yes before i say my and you drop us off you said something to me about maybe it's my chance to show i could showcase something that you would be interested in you want to learn how the sausage is made in seo not so much how, well how, whatever you think would be important but but i think the results are very you know if you could show results that that you've delivered for your clients you, know, you okay. can always go to Google and, and say, you know, here's some clients, check it out first. Before Love you it. it. Okay, thanks um, for the reminder. And then, and then some of the things that go into it, certainly, you know, we're all, not everybody understands the complexities of SEO. And so if you can provide some, some knowledge, that's really helpful. Thank you. I'm just at the one more thing on your registration page to sign up for a showcase next week. Since all right, no that sounds great. Oh, by the way, um, on... Um, October 4th, we're not going to have a meeting that day. It's Yom Kippur, the evening before. I'm going to be in Europe. Um, and uh, so we're going to, that's going to be the first one in a long, actually, Ron Hubscher just signed up for Yom for, I, for, uh, I meant to. I meant to do it on the 12th, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to take that off the list. And, yep. and that week, we will not have a meeting. Look at all these people popping up and. That's the idea, right? I'm in a hurry. Every time I choose a date, someone else, Keith, yeah, so Ron, Keith just grabbed you the guys 12. are sneaky. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's fast, happening man. as, as we go. You got to be fast. 
Thanks, Ron, right, for guys. The, the shout out. Hey. Awesome. Oh, no, thank you. You did an awesome job. Wednesday the 28th is it. still available. Oh, Take care, there Ron. comes Ron again. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I can't do it that. Oh, the fourth, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete. Thanks. Who's on Take first? Care.